Thank you, Jeff. I think we're all inspired, suitably inspired now. I, I, I wanted to say a, a couple things. First of all, Dorothy was right, and there really is no place like home. So I, I wanted to, to take this opportunity. I, I still haven't completely shook off the bureaucrat in me, and when somebody puts me at a podium, I'm going to take full advantage of that opportunity. Uh, but we do have a couple announcements to make, and uh, I'd like to start with somebody we all know and love, even though he supposedly is, also made a choice to leave the institution. He hasn't really quite left. So uh, backstage, weighing 175 pounds, please welcome Tony Manon. next three weekends. Have I left anything out, Judd? <laughs> Magnificent set you see here in other parts of the set. Good tonight. Let me take this. Go ahead and identify yourself. <laughs> you guys all know Brendan? You should. He's pretty good in this show. <laughs> and he learned how to use power tools. See you all at the show. Uh, you'll have a great time. You really will. I have. I know that. Yes. Welcome. Okay. <laughs> I'm as relieved as all of you that there were no killer rabbits involved in <laughs> in that introduction. I wanted to talk to you just for a few minutes, very few minutes, about what I've been doing. I think a lot of you know that I, I made the decision to leave here um, about 20 months ago now, since May of 2012. I took a job that some people say is the best job in Idaho government, and I think it is. I had a great time. It's a job that uh, Steve and Jim Irons' father used to have, and uh, I heard stories about Jim and Steve running around the tunnels that are under the Capitol Mall in Boise and throughout the Lynn Jordan building. I had great autonomy. I met with legislators. I got to work with the governor's office and Department of Commerce and Labor. It was great. I had great fun. And I had a great office. I was on the third floor of the Lynn Jordan building and there were other people like Tom Luna in the building and Mike Rush was in the building and Tom's sister Teresa Luna or its Department of Administration, but I had the best office in the building. It was on the third floor corner, right on State Street, and looking to the west, I could see that mirrored office building that was adjacent, but right across the street was the Capitol building. 
And every morning when I got to work and all day at work, I could look out and be inspired by the Capitol building out there. In the morning, I would get to the office very early in the morning and I could actually watch the sun come up and the reflection of the office building right next to me it would come right in one window and I could watch the Capitol building warm up when the sun came up and it was great. Tom Luna hated coming to my office because it was way better than his. <laughs> so, if it was so great and I had such a great office, then why did I come back? Because when I looked out that window, as great as the view was, there was one thing missing. I didn't see any students and I didn't see any teachers. And the work that I was doing, I grew to learn more and more, was very abstract. It wasn't the real work of education. I was in a meeting last summer in Montana with some state directors of community colleges and the, the director from Virginia said this, and it really resonated with me, and I think it will with you. Community colleges are the emergency rooms of higher education. If you stop and think about that, what we do here in the community college is the hard work of higher education. We don't turn people away. You don't have to be so good to come here. We take everybody and we help them. We connect people with opportunity. And it occurred to me further that if you think about what happens in the matrix and other places around campus, it's kind of like Ellis Island. So the poor and the tired and the huddled masses and these education immigrants come to us and they don't understand the language. They have very little money in their pocket and all they want is a chance. And we connect them with that opportunity. One of the things that I learned was that sometimes we knew, need to move beyond what we do and how we do it. And, and I heard this uh, from Jeff. Sometimes the most important question is why? So what about the why? Why do we do what we do? If I had such a great job and a great office, why did I come back? And I can tell you it wasn't because I was tired of driving, although this has been great. I love that six minute commute. But it was because of what I believe in, which I think is what all of you believe in, which is providing that opportunity and that connection for these people that really, truly need it without turning away anyone in any circumstance. And then there was this guy here that I've known for over 20 years, and I knew that he felt the same way that I did about this. And fortunately for me, he knew the same thing about me. And so when he became president, he helped connect me to an opportunity of my own. Thank you, President Fox. It's good to be home, and I love that view out my window. It's going to be even better next week when the students show up. I also want to thank all of you for the welcome. It's been overwhelming and humbling, and uh, well, I've noticed there have been a few changes. There's one thing that I've noticed is still the same. You still have to wave twice in the restrooms to get in a paper towel to dry your hands. <laughs> among other things. <laughs> and finally, I, I do have one final announcement to make, and it's my pleasure to introduce the Florence Nightingale of CSI Foundation Executive Director and my good friend, Deb Wilson.